at the cross her station keeping, stood the mournful mother weeping, close to Jesus to the last. Through her heart, his sorrow sharing, all his bitter anguish bearing, now at length the sword had passed. Oh, how sad and sore distress was the mother highly blessed of the sole begotten one. Christ above in ferment hangs. She beneath beholds the pangs of her dying glorious son. Is there one who will not weep? Wound well, in mystery so deep, Christ, dear mother, to behold. Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain, in that mother's pain untold? Bruised, derided, cursed, defiled, she beheld her tender child, all with the bloody scourges rent. The sins of his own nation saw him hang in desolation, till his spirit forth he sent. O oh, sweet mother, font of love, touch my spirit from above, make my heart with your accord. Make me feel as you have felt. Make my soul to glow and melt with love of Christ, my Lord. Holy Mother, pierce me through, and my heart each wound renew of my Savior crucified. Let me share with you his pain, who for all our sins was who for me in torment died. Let me mingle tears with you, mourning him who mourned for me all the days that I may live. By the cross with you to stay, bear with you to weep and pray, is all I ask from you to give. Virgin of all virgins blessed, listen to my fun request. Let me share your grief divine. Let me, <clears throat> to my latest, latest breath, in my body bear the death of that dying son of yours. Wounded with his every wound. Deep my soul till it has swooned in his very blood away. Be to me, O oh virgin, night less in flame. I burn and die in his awful judgment day. Christ, when you shall come me hence, be your mother my defense, be your cross my victory. While my body here decays, my soul your goodness prays, save in heaven eternally. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Without dying, you won the martyr's crown beneath the cross of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 25. Standing by the cross. Not as is often depicted in paintings, Mary fainted in the floor. No. Standing at the cross. The Greek word for standing is histomai, meaning she took a stand. It's very similar to when there is a situation, let's say a political situation, and you take a stand. I stand for this and for that. That's how Mary stood. She took a stand. There we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrow. And with this celebration, we really celebrate and desire to imitate how Mary was able to stand, to take a stand at the foot of Jesus Christ. Yesterday we celebrated the exaltation of the cross. Today, how Mary took a stand next to that cross, the cross that we exalt, the great mystery of our faith. Perhaps to help us deepen in how Mary took a stand at the foot of the cross, we could go into how Jesus took the stand himself crucified, so that when we deepen in how Christ did it, the hope is that we can better understand how his own mother did it, so that then we can better imitate how to be like Mary taking a stand by the mystery of the cross, and if it is the will of the Father, to drink of the cup and die on the cross. And the way to deepening in how Jesus did it, let's go to the first reading. This is the reading from the letter to the Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 to 9. And I'm going to go really deep into this scripture because it is so rich, so powerful and so beautiful. It says, In the day when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Just the thought. A Jesus Christ cry with loud cries. His prayers and supplications were directed to the fathers, but with tears, with crying out loud. We often forget it. We picture this Jesus, this superhero Jesus that does not suffer, that is, is not faced by pain. No, he's fully human. And just as he cried over the death of his friend Lazar, he is crying over his own upcoming death. How powerful that prayer. Father, let this cup pass away from me. He doesn't want to drink from the cup. But your will be done. He offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. So looking upon his own upcoming death, his own passion, having to drink of his, the cup that is so bitter, he is crying with loud cries to the Father. Father, take this cup away from me. 
but your will be done. And he was heard because of his reverence. I hear, I just want to pause. Because here is Jesus crying, tears, crying out loud, prayers and supplications to the Father, take this cup away from me, but your will be done. And he was heard because of his reverence. I want to know, what do you mean by reverence? Because I want my prayers and supplications to be heard. I want my tears and my begging, supplications, prayer to the Father to be heard. And he was heard because of his reverence. Now, I this morning, sorry that I came in late, I, was, I really was immersed in studying the word that is used for reverence in the original Greek. And here, the Greek word for reverence is eulabeias, from the word eulo, eulabes, eulabes. When you take the word eulabes, divided in two, eu, which means well, good, and laubes, whose primitive word is lambano, means to receive, to get, to take hold of, to lay hold of. To receive and to receive well. To lay hold of, but in a good way. When you put the word together and you keep praying with it as I was doing this morning, you know, I couldn't help but get the word assertiveness. That reverence to pray, supplications, tears, crying out with reverence is to do so in an assertive way. So now I went to Dorland's medical dictionary to see how they define assertiveness. Here what we're trying to do is to try to figure out how did Jesus pray, how he took a stand, how he was able to drink of the cup, therefore as to better understand how Mary was able to take a stand at the foot of the cross. So when we look at the word assertiveness, the following things came up. And keep in mind of it, because from there I want to derive principles of how we should pray. One, it says, a form of behavior characterized by a confident declaration or affirmation of a statement. A person is assertive, is confident in what they're saying and how they're behaving, confident, without need of proof. So the person states something or behaves in a way that you don't need proof. You don't need logical proof to be convinced of their point or their way of acting because they are assertive, they're confident. You don't need proof. Wow. And the way he's speaking, the way he's acting, I'm convinced because of his confidence. Then he continues saying, a confident declaration or an affirmation of a statement without need of proof this affirms the person's right or point of view without either aggressively threatening or submissively permitting another to ignore or deny one's right or point of view. So there's a confidence without need to have proof that doesn't go to one extreme which is to be aggressively threatening dominance. If you don't do what I do or agree with me, I'm gonna... Uh. But neither going to the other extreme, which is to become submissive and letting the other step over me, whatever you want, yes, kick me around if you want me, denying one's own dignity. So how do you find that place without aggressively threatening or submissively permitting things against my own dignity, yet remaining confident and without need of proof. Now, 
Let's apply this to Jesus. Let's apply this to Mary. Confidence. This is how we should pray. Confidence. Not confidence in ourselves. There's not much to be confident about ourselves. But confident in a God who is my Father, who exists, who is good, who is loving, who only allows things for my own good, for my own growth. He will always allow what's best for me. Do you have that confidence? Do you pray with that confidence? The confidence of Christ. The confidence of Mary. The confidence of Christ. Father, take away this cup, but your will be done. Because I trust your loving Father. I trust that you only will allow what is good, what's best for me. And if it means drinking of the cup, I will drink it to the last drop because I'm confident in you. My Father, I trust you. I know you're good. I know you love me. I know you only want the best. And if it is your will for me to die on the cross, confident in you, trusting you, I let myself be crucified. Or from the perspective of Mary, at the foot of the cross, looking at her son, dying, but in confident to a father who's loving, who's good, she's able to look at her son, but then look beyond the sun and say, Father, I'm trusting. I have confidence in you. You're good. You're loving. You won't allow this to your son, to my son, to our son, unless through it you're working something great. Confident, not in yourself. Confident in the, in the Father. And need no proof. Father, I don't even need a proof that you're listening to my prayers because I know and I'm confident that you're hearing my prayer, that you're here with me, without aggressive threats. Oh, careful. Often in grief, what we do, one of the stages or one of the emotions or one of the acts that happen, one of the behaviors in grieving is we bargain with God. God, if you save my loved one from this sickness, I promise you I'm going to go to Mass every day. Pray the five rosaries every second. I will do this. We begin to bargain. And when you see that bargaining is not working, you begin to start, you start getting a little aggressive. And you start even manipulating. Manipulating God. Making threats against God. If you don't save my loved one from this sickness, I will stop believing in you. I will never go to mess. And your children, I will not raise them in the faith. You begin to threaten. That's not what Jesus did. That's not what the Blessed Mother did. So careful not to go into aggressive threats, manipulating or assuming a position of dominance over God. Oof, sin of pride. But here's the other one. Neither allow yourself to become this submissively permitting person that allows your dignity to be trampled upon. Wow, how do you do that? Especially when the cross entails crucifying and treating in an undignified way Jesus Christ. That's a tough one. How are you submissive to harsh treatment Treatment that is against your own dignity as a human being without being aggressive and without being submissive. The key here is discerning the Father's will and accepting, even if it's treatment that goes against my dignity, not because I'm allowing others to treat me in an unworthy way, but because I'm confident and trusting the Father that if something were to happen against my own human dignity, through it I trust that the Father is working something greater. But that implies that I'm not just, okay,
okay, whoever wants to do anything to me, you are okay, come and beat me up if you want. I am not punching back for anybody who wants to do it. If it is not the Father's will, you take a stand and you say no. If there is something that could be changed, you change. If there is something that needs to be spoken about and seek justice, you seek justice. But when the Father says, be silent now. And allow yourself to be led silently as a lamb to be slaughtered. Then you quiet, you shut your mouth, and you do like Jesus Christ. Confident in the Father, not yourself, and allowing the Father's will to unfold. That's how Christ did. That's how Mary was able to take a stand in this great mystery of our faith. That even though at times the Father allowed bitter cups, even though at times there's a sword that pierces our soul in the Father's will, even though often we look at a loved one suffering, hanging at the cross, we must remain confident without need of proof and confident in God. No need to prove that you are listening to my prayers. Father, I know you are listening to my prayers. I'm confident in you. You exist. You're all powerful. You are good. You are loving. No need for me to threaten you. No need for me to be submissively permitting anything to happen, but only your will and your will alone. And therefore, then we can echo as Jesus Christ did. Father, take this cup away from me, but your will be done. As we celebrate our sorrowful mother, may she be our example, our teacher, and may we learn, like Mary, like Jesus, to take a stand in this great mystery of our faith.